Hello, everyone, and welcome to Lithium Partners Fall Investor Conference. My name is Ben Shamsian, Vice President. Thank you for joining us here for our gaming panel titled The Maturation of Gaming, No Longer Child's Play. We are joined by three executives from great, three great companies from the industry to get some insight on how they see the space. I've gathered some topics that are of interest to investors and hope to learn greatly from our panelists. Joining us today are Shafin Diamond Tahani, CEO of Victory Square Technologies, Matt Bailey, CEO of Game On Entertainment Technologies, and Tim Bieber, CEO of F360. Before we begin the discussion, I would like to have each of you introduce yourselves and provide a brief description on your companies. Shafin, we can start with you. Yeah, thanks, Ben, for having me, and uh, nice to see you, Matt and Tim. So Victory Square Technologies was founded in 2017. Um, the, the idea was to give investors access to the next, you know, best tech giants before their giants. So we've built the Venture Build Studio where we found uh, 26 of the, the brightest companies uh, from over 80 accelerators around the world. Uh, these are companies that are focused on key sectors such as digital health, gaming, esports, crypto, virtual and augmented reality, the creator economy, cybersecurity, and green tech. And um, we put them into one uh, public company where we work with these companies for 12 to 48 months uh, and then spin them out. So investors are, are, are getting access, uh, ground floor access to you know, the, the next, tech, next best tech companies by investing in VST. Um, we're publicly traded in Canada under ticker VST and in Frankfurt under 6F6 and on the OTCQX under VSQTF. Great. Uh, Matt? Yeah, so at Game On, uh, we're solving a problem that media and entertainment are suffering from right now, and it's that viewership is dwindling. You know, people aren't, aren't watching anymore, especially the younger demographic like millennials. So we're working with those content owners and distributors, be it teams, leagues, TV networks, OTT platforms, and sports books, to make their content more engaging and social through fan engagement technologies like prediction games. Uh, we're working with the likes of NBC Universal, um, MX Player in, in, in India, and we're working with them again to make their content more engaging, social, and monetizable. We're currently listed uh, on the CAC, ticker symbol GET, G-E-T. Thank you. And uh, Tim. Nice. Yeah, thanks, Ben. Um, yeah, we're working on something extremely exciting here but so uh, fantasy 360 we started started in business in 2017 in the out of home entertainment space uh kind of social gaming creating escape rooms and they were very interactive uh very high tech escape rooms and now what we've now what we've done is um created escape experiences that are all in vr and we're creating a what we call a physical portal to the metaverse so the whole metaverse concept and vr being this portal into the metaverse right now is what we're what we're really after, um, and so what we have is a shipping container, a forty foot shipping container that is um, a hyper immersive VR experience. Six players go inside. You're in VR headsets, so all the visuals are mapped to all the physical objects that are inside that you're grabbing, touching, feeling. There's uh, heat heat blasts, cool blasts scents that give you the impression that you're there, uh, motion rumble floor. So basically you step into this shipping container and you feel like you're in the experience because the visuals are actually um, actually kind of this out of, out of the world, out of, out of worldly experience. So it's, it's super exciting. We've got a number of LOIs that, that are being signed with this thing that's gonna be launching. Uh, we're launching it right now, actually. Uh, we just listed on the CSC under tickle, ticker symbol VRAR. So a lot of fun stuff that's happening in, uh, in, in the realm of VR and metaverse. Thank you for that. Um, now let's get uh, into some topics of interest. Um, gaming in all its different forms has been accelerating over the last 10 years, uh, and all points indicate that the growth will continue. What has led to this phenomenon, and why do you, why do you expect such growth to continue to accelerate? Uh, Shafin, I'll start with you. Um, so, you know, it's, I recently read an article and I think they were saying that, you know, the, the, the total value of the global gaming industry is, is over 300 billion, um, which, you know, is, is, is more than uh, music and, and movies combined. I think in that same article I read, 
you know, there are currently about 2.7 billion gamers in the world, uh, of which 500 million were added in the, in, the, in the last three years. So I think some of the reasons for that, one would be, you know, the emergence of new gaming platforms. Um, the second, uh, you know, the surge in mobile gaming adoption. The third, which I think is most interesting for, from my perspective, is the, this emphasis on social interaction. You know, this desire for social experiences. We, we've seen that accelerated during the COVID-19 pandemic. But, you know, I think the social aspect, um, you know, is, is increasingly a key aspect in, in, in this overall experience for, for gamers. So connecting with friends, meeting new people are, are critical to, you know, the, 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 this, you know, this gaming experience. So, you know, we're seeing social interactions being a, you know, big, big part of it. My son, who's nine years old, you know, is a, is a digital first. And, uh, you know, I would go and meet my friends at the mall or, or talk on the phone. Uh, they're meeting in Fortnite, in Minecraft, in Roblox, uh, and connecting with one another, listening to music, and having their kind of interactions there. So I think this, you know, the, this new version of gaming is, 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 is really, in, in, there's a social, big social, you know, kind of interaction um, perspective there. Um, and I think, you know, with that, we're seeing this emergence of, of a, you know, gaming as an ecosystem of super platforms, you know, where players can, again, meet, communicate, um, you know, watch live stream concerts, uh, shop, listen to music. Um, Tim kind of mentioned a bit about what they were working on. It reminded me almost of a, you know, a, a physical introduction to the metaverse where, um, you know, people are spending more and more time, you know, kind of digitally. So I would say, you know, the three reasons being the emergence of new gaming platforms, surge in mobile gaming adoption. But the most interesting thing I think people should watch for is this emphasis on, on, on social interaction. That's great. Matt, I'd love to hear your thoughts there. Yeah, I mean, just to expand on that, I think we're seeing, you know, gaming's been around for you know, decades, but we're starting to see this concept of gamification, uh, adding layers of gaming to various other industries like you know, watching a movie can be a game now, as we saw with Netflix and Bandersnatch. Um, going to an event can be a game now by checking in and, and earning rewards. Um, you know, gamification as a whole is, is integrating so many other industries and experiences. And I think we're going to see, see more and more of that. Yeah, Tim? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll add to that. I mean, as I mentioned in, in my little intro, the, the metaverse, so right now, what's just really exploding as a platform and really what they're calling the next computing platform is this concept of a Web 3.0 or what's being termed now the metaverse. So we saw it, um, Mark Zuckerberg in their last Facebook earnings, earnings call said that they want to be known no longer as a mobile company, but as a metaverse company. Uh, you know, Shafin talked about Fortnite. Fortnite... Um, you know, the, the amounts of, of active users and interactions within that, which a lot of people are pointing to that as being one of the kind of key uh, platforms that's, that's an early, early metaverse where people, people are creating their character. They've got their, uh, their virtual persona in there. They're hanging out and doing concerts. I mean, the last concert that they did was Travis Scott. That was 12.3 million people. That's the largest concert in history. Uh, the, I did some research on it. The, the next largest concert was three and a half million people on the beach of Copacabana. Um, so it's like it's just in in scales and proportion that we've never seen before. So I think the the you know the next wave is going to be this this metaverse and what's happening within the metaverse, not only for gaming but just 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 tech and society. It's quite interesting. That's great. Um, obviously, you know, gaming is, is, is multifaceted. Um, let's talk about sports betting in, in specifically. Um, obviously, in the U.S., it's the legality is state dependent. Um, what is the role of free to play gaming in sports betting? Um, Matt, I'll uh, start with you. Yeah, I mean, first of all, I think sports betting is in, in North America specifically is one of the biggest opportunities of our lifetime, you know, it will be the biggest sports betting market in the world due to regulatory reasons that it hasn't been, uh, but now we're starting to see the majority of US states and, and Canada as well adopt sports betting, which is really exciting. Uh, we think that free to, the free to pay part of the funnel is really important 
free to play in general, when you're looking at predictive gaming, um, it's not new. Uh, it's been around for, for a while, free to play prediction games, but there are a lot of, a lot of dead bodies on the side of the road. The reason why is because most of them only focused on, on one fan motivation. It's, it's playing and winning cash, play for free, win cash, play for free, win, win a reward, uh, which I think is, is the, real, the real problem. Uh, what, what free to play needs to do more of is tap into the other motivations that fuel fandom, like recognition in front of a, a community that you care about or progression, you know, going up certain levels and divisions and earning badges and things like that, bringing the, the elements of a video game to a free to play predictive experience is what truly will tap into the motivations that that fuel fandom, no matter the content, be it sports, reality TV or whatever else. Uh, we think that's really important in driving an engaging uh, free to play experience that ultimately, you know, will convert to, to real money betting. Got it. Shaf, how do you see free to play? Yeah, no, you know, I, I agree with with what Matt, uh, you know, is, is saying. It's interesting, like, it's always been used as a lead gen tool. Uh, and this is going to be a bad phrase, but almost like a gateway drug. Um, uh, but I think that what separates kind of the wheat from the chaff, um, like Ma Matt was saying, there's a lot of dead bodies on the road, I think, is this is this additional... Uh, additional engagement as opposed to just, you know, play for free, win cash. And so, um, you know, I think it's always been used as, 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 as a lead gen tool. I think more than ever, um, sports betting companies, along with, you know, professional sports teams and leagues are, are desperately trying to keep fans engaged, especially with all the, you know, with, with Twitch and esports and all these other different types of um, uh, distractions. Uh, I think how, uh, you know, I think it's the innovation around it um, that's going to uh, allow for uh, you know companies operating in that space to be be, su be successful and really um, create um, you know the, the right incentive uh, or rewards program for the community or piece of IP that the free to play concept is kind of built around. Got it. Got it. Tim, any thoughts there? Yeah, I love I love free to play. I mean, I love I love the business model. Um, you know, what we're really going for here is a bit of a you know, maybe call it a hybrid or even just a sort of a stepped back approach where, where the reward at the end is, is your social experience with your friends. So our, our client are family entertainment centers, those family entertainment centers obviously charge, charge to have, have somebody um, in this attraction and play this game. But then the reward at the end of it is that you've come out with your friends. You guys have had this experience together, a hands-on fully interactive experience but where we're kind of seeing this as this physical portal to the metaverse is the a one step further from from free to play which right now what's happening in the gaming sector is called is called uh, play to earn and basically with with now with um, you know kind of the nft space one um, one gaming platform that's really leading leading the way here is axi infinity so there's some really interesting stuff that's happening there that, that there can be a reward at the end that's beyond just that social social fun experience, but you're 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 rewarded with um, you know an NFT treasure hunt or something a badge a badge of honor that you passed you passed our escape VR game. Um, so that's where we're seeing seeing the trend migrate from free to play to now play to earn and NFT being a big part of that. So I think the NFT game is going to be really important to try to figure out how to incorporate into in, into any gaming environment. It's quite interesting. Um, you know, as, as, as the title of our uh, panel indicates, uh, it's gaming is no longer child's play. Uh, corporations are ever more using gaming and games as avenues for retention and enhancement of their customers and their employees. Can you talk about what these ex executives are seeing and what's leading them to this avenue? Uh, Tim, I'll begin with you. Sure. Yeah. You know, there's a there's a there's a few things that I can speak to there. So, uh, you know, a few years ago, we did an execution with Intel. Intel came to us and said, we need to we need to help uh, train our executives in team building. A lot of our executives across divisions don't necessarily work well together or know that they need to work well together. So um, across six continents and 50 countries, we rolled out a their mobile escape experiences for Intel. So these are, you know, I mean, it's Intel. 
and it's Intel executives. And the experience was a gamified approach to trying to teach, uh, you know, a, a, co a corporate training experience of team building. So that's, you know, a, a, you know, a perfect example that this is no longer child's play of trying to figure out gamified, um, gamified ways of engaging a bigger, bigger and broader audience. Another example of that, which is a large part of our business is experiential marketing. So we did, we did a, um, a campaign for Bayer Pharmaceutical, where they used a 40 foot shipping container that was a three room escape experience. And uh, this thing showed up at events all around the world. It was easy to pick up. It gamified the experience for their consumers that, that it wasn't just you know, kind of a boring experience to come and talk to a brand. And then with our VR shipping container, I mean, this is well beyond child's play. I mean, what we're, what we're doing here is a first in putting VR into, a, into an environment, a fully hyper immersive environment, where you've got all of these physical effects that are firing at the same time that all the immersive experience in the headsets um, are, are working. So it's, it's, you know, it's a level far beyond where gaming has ever gone before. And the corporations that are jumping onto that are these large family entertainment centers and, uh, you know, bigger attraction, uh, you know, not necessarily kind of your Disneyland attraction parks, but attraction parks that are looking for that next cool thing that's not just engaging the kid because audiences are changing. Audiences are becoming more sophisticated. They're wanting things that are, that are you know, that much more mind blowing. So whether it's corporate America or whether it's down to a theme park at, at your, you know, around the block from you, uh, the experiences are just coming to a whole other level. That's great. Matt, you, your product is largely B2B and with, with large corporations as your customers, help us understand more. Yeah, again, it's that, that element of, of gamification, um, infiltrating other industries such as TV, sports, and just content in general. The reason why it is, is because gaming equals engagement and at the end of the day you know content or tv networks teams leagues want people to watch more and you know fans and consumers are no longer just you know tuning in to watch the game millennials and gen z aren't watching the game at all you know tv is is becoming the second or third screen even the the never screen in some cases our our chairman Jay Moses likes to always say, if he hands the remote to his teenage children and says, put on ABC, they won't know how. And that's, that's a huge, huge problem for, for, for media. So gamification and, and tying that into the content and turning, watching something or consuming content or in between episodes, turning that into a game through game mechanics like recognition and rewards and progression, uh, bringing elements of, of video games to, to, to watching content uh, is really important. And, you know, just to, just to go back to, to the child's play um, wording, like, like gaming in general, I mean, it's, it's far from child's play in, in, a, in so many ways, you know, gamers are, are athletes now, you know, soon, I'm sure there'll be Olympians in the not too distant future. They're making, you know, some are making more more than than many professional traditional athletes. There are stadiums now dedicated just to, to gaming. So I think that that seeing that continue to grow will then continue to infiltrate into where else we see gamification applied, such as you know TV and, and other content. Shafin, you you saw this trend coming years ago, hence your investments and in, you know that you have in the space. Um, have you seen it? you know, migrate and, and kind of where do you see it going? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it, it's, it's, you know, really kind of uh, the, the point Matt made, which is, you know, gaming um, increases engagement. You know, what we've seen is this movement, you know, towards, uh, you know, whether you know, corporations or companies, uh, whether it's, a, you know, to attract customers, really building a community around their IP or, or product um, and then once you're able to do that, you know, the goal is to, you know, increase customer frequency, uh, dollar value of visit and loyalty. And, you know, I think data has shown that when you incentivize that participation, you, you know, you automatically increase the odds of attracting, retaining, you know, kind of customers. And so I really think it just boils down to you know, gaming equals engagement. It's been proven and validated. Um, and I think what's interesting now is that given that specifically in the TV scenario, given that TV now, you know, might be the, the second or third, uh, you know, third, third option, um, 
there, there are a number of, of, of players that are now using technology today to mention NFTs that, you know, using today's technology to create, you know, to further gamify, uh, you know, the experience um, as opposed to just having it very one dimensional. Now you can, you know, you can really extend that, uh, that customer, you know, uh, journey or experience uh, in, in your products. And again, it all kind of boils down to though is, you know, gamification is proven to, um, you know, to, to result in, in engagement. Um, one quick note too, it's interesting. I was talking to someone else about this. Uh, you know, most people have downloaded the Starbucks app and I think Starbucks, is, Starbucks has done a great job uh, and they have these streaks where, you know, it's funny, I noticed myself, you know, wanting to make sure I go to Starbucks every day for five days, once I've gone two days in a row, because I get, you know, extra points. And, you know, there's a gamification has become super sophisticated. There's a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, you know, human psychology that's, that's gone into, into, into coding and programming these things uh, to really, you know, take into account ways to, uh, you know, I impact human behavior. So, um, and then there's machine learning and AI that's like optimizing it out for the individual person. So I noticed that like Starbucks is feeding me things that are getting me engaged to, to want to go again, uh, customer frequency increases the dollar value of my visit and keeps me loyal to them. So that's, that's great. Um, we've talked about, uh, television in general, uh, and, and sports viewership, uh, both declining, Matt Bailey, you're of the opinion that fan engagement should be more like video games. Um, can you explain more? And I invite uh, Shaf and Tim uh, to respond afterwards. Yeah, I mean, this, this goes, goes back to the, the dead bodies that are on the side of the road with, in free to play. It's because they, they haven't embraced uh, the, the game mechanics that, that video games um, you know, have seen be so successful. They're just focusing on you know, the one game mechanic of playing and winning, playing and winning, which just won't work. So why we like to think about video games is one, because our team come, comes from video games at Jay Moses, our chairman, uh, Greenlit, the original Grand Theft Auto, Santi, our chief product officer, spent 10 years building the FIFA game at EA Sports um, so successfully. So bringing those mechanics, like Shaft just mentioned, the Starbucks app, that's a great uh, example of progression and allowing users to progress through and, and earn different points, but then community and rewards. And, uh, you know, when you, if you think about office pools as, as why they're so engaging, it's not because you can win a hundred dollars. It's because you can turn up to the office the next day and brag about being the winner of the office pool. That's the exact type of mechanics that we want to build in that, into our predictive gaming experience and our fan engagement technologies that we're serving to teams, leagues, and TV networks around the world. Um, and, you know, it's not just sports, it's, it's reality TV, it's news. We're even talking right now to a very popular weather app. Uh, you know, their problem is people open up the app in the, you know, 10 seconds in the morning, they check the weather and they're out of there. So how can we apply different game mechanics like progression and recognition uh, to that audience to keep them more engaged within the experience. Got it. Tim, uh, fan engagement is, is, is not something you directly deal with, but your, your, the corporations that are your customers or, you know, their fans are their customers or their employees help, help us understand that aspect. Yeah. I mean, the, the engagement, the engagement in the experience, our experience for these um, family entertainment centers is extremely important because they, they, um, they need them to come back. They need them to come back to our, you know, we selfishly want them to come back to our experience and do it over and over and over again. We've got, there's seven missions that are, that, that's part of our experience. So the first mission, when you blast off into space, you've got to kind of solve, solve this riddle as to, as to what's happening with this alien race that's, um, you know, come, come into our galaxy. And then you, you progress through the storyline. So for us, you know, the engagement, um, it's, it's really important to engage into a story and a bigger, you know, as I kind of throw around this word metaverse, our game we kind of look at is like more of a micro metaverse. I call it a microverse. So you've got to engage someone in your, in your microverse and then, and then you start to engage them into a bigger, um, you know, a, a, a bigger metaverse story in our story and then within the family entertainment centers that these exist um you know they they they, they want to have they want to have people show up they want to have them uh stay for longer in their center and play more games so engagement is extremely extremely important 
Got it. Chef? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think it, it uh, you know, a couple of things. One, um, uh, I think now that, that, you know, people are, you know, I, I find myself watching a, a game, uh, you know, on my phone, checking, you know, my fantasy stats and, you know, specifically if we're talking about NFL as an example. Um, also quick snippets. I think people are now used to, to, you know, to these, these, these quick, quick snippets. So from a fan engagement perspective, you know, with, with, with what Matt was mentioning with, with game on, uh, uh, or, or sports betting in general. I mean, it's the game within a game where I think what, 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 you know, what sports teams and leagues are, are doing, um, in traditional sports is, you're creating games within the game. So you might be watching a game and on your phone because you're realizing you've got two devices, uh, you know, you're co-viewing with other friends in different, you know, type of areas, but you're playing games throughout that game. So it's keeping you motivated to continue, um, you know, that, that experience. And then obviously the rewards and badges that you, you, you earn um, are what, you know, keep you coming back, um, you know, game after game after game. So I think, a lot of this is a result of the technologies that are that, that exist to, to today. What people are able to do, and just the habits and behaviors. Our behaviors have changed, um, you know, with with um, you know with the the advancements in, in technology, the mobile adoption, this idea of like quick snippets, um, you know, where uh, you, you've seen uh, IPL uh, or rugby sevens like shortening the game because people are just not able to sit through a you know. In cricket, you know, like a three-day match. So I think a, a lot of this is a lot of this uh, this fan engagement using these 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 video game or gamification tools are just a result of like human behavior today and the tools that that we we kind of have to at our at our disposal. That's great. Thank you. Uh, I want to talk about NFTs. That that, that word has been or that, that acronym has been thrown around. Non fungible tokens. Um, Shafin, if you can just a you know, briefly explain to us what they are, how they work, and and how do you see the role of NFTs uh, in gaming, and what utility does it bring? It's funny you. you it's funny you asked that question. I posted a, a note on on LinkedIn today, uh, which is you know just me trying to explain to my friends what NFTs are. And it's, it's 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 a it's a pretty funny picture, which you know I think a lot of people uh, kind of group it into to, to three different types of ca categories. Before I kind of talk about that, there's one interesting thing happening, you know, having been in the crypto space since, since 2012 or 2013, we've seen kind of several booms, you know, the ICO boom, the DeFi boom, and the NFT boom. And I think, you know, blockchain tech has kind of revolutionized uh, and evolved in many, area, in many areas, but specifically in gaming, you know, I think it, uh, it requires special attention. And Tim had referenced something called play to earn earlier. I think there's this gamify you know, boom going on where it's a synergy of, you know, the ICO, DeFi, and NFT uh, market. I think that's what something that, that's going to be significant is, and really NFTs are kind of at the fore, forefront. So, you know, NFT stands for non-fungible token. You know, it's a unique digital, you know, kind of collectible traded on the blockchain in, in crypto games uh, is, is, you know, in the reference to gaming. Um, they can represent, you know, uh, consumables, you know, characters and, and any other tradable kind of asset. And users can, you know, sell their in-game NFTs to, to peers and, and earn tokens with these play-to-earn, you know, kind of models. But this play-to-earn model, I think, is or this play-to-earn phenomenon, phenomenon, I think, is a is a real sweet spot, you know, for for gaming and for game developers, um, where it's simply giving you know gamers and game enthusiasts uh, control over uh, control and ownership over their in-game assets. Um, you know, allowing these gamers to increase the value of these assets by, you know, actively playing the game. And then players, you know, in this business model create value for, for game developers and other players by participating kind of in this in-game uh, in game economy. And it's interesting because there's, you know, in, in games like, you know, w World of Warcraft, uh, you know, players were playing and earning in-game assets, but they didn't own them. And so you would see secondary markets being created for people to buy, sell, and trade them. I think what, you know, this, this play to earn kind of economic model around NFTs has done is let players, you know, create new digital assets, trade them via the, you know, the video games infrastructure. And using the play to earn model, uh, players can earn virtual in-game currency, uh, you know, which is liquid and pretty easily sold for other crypto cryptocurrencies and, and fiat. 
Tim, your thoughts there? Yeah, that's there's a I mean it's a huge and exploding trend and it's really it's really just exploded in the last year and even in the last 3 months it's just absolutely exploded. So we um you know we're tracking it really closely one of our board members uh Kathy Hackle she's known as the godmother of the metaverse and a huge uh, way that the metaverse is being kind of monetized is is by NFT. It's been a big driver in what's happening within within the metaverse. Uh, so we've been we've been leaning quite heavily on her and coming up with our own solutions of of NFT. So not necessarily not necessarily collectibles, um, but you know at the end of the day collectibles. But you know one one big collectible is an avatar so you you could look at you could look at um board ape yacht club and the you know the they 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 have avatars uh, these avatars are trading for you know 30 40 50 thousand dollars um you know in real dollars uh so the i think the the avatar play for us is what we're really excited about because we've 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 just done an LOI on a uh, VR game catalog company that powers location-based entertainment facilities. They've got 325 VR games. Every one of those games is, as I'm referring to, a microverse. So the challenge is to connect all of those games, and a very easy and tangible way to be able to do that is to connect them with one avatar. So instead of every single one of those games having its own avatar, you would have one avatar. And that's that, you know, from the movie Ready Player One, um, you've got one avatar that move you move through the Oasis in. So what we're challenged to do and what we're doing right now is creating a single avatar that will work across 300, 325 games. Those 325 games you could look at as a location-based VR uh, metaverse. Uh, those avatars themselves could be NFT. There's also some opportunity of doing NFT like Easter egg, Easter egg hunt um, and collectibles. But we're, you know, we're, we're in early days in trying to figure it out. I, you know, I think at the end of the day, there has to be that play in any, in, in, in any um, platform that we're creating, but we want to be smart about it and not just throw around buzzwords and do something that wouldn't resonate with our community and our audience. Got it. Matt, Game On has uh, made some investments in, in the area of NFTs. Uh, help us understand, you know, what it, what they are and how you're thinking about it. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, again, like the others, we, we watched for a while. We our, I think our chief product officer was the mastermind behind NBA Top Shot. So you had that background. And, and when NFTs kind of have exploded throughout the last year, we, we noticed that a lot of them are just kind of cash grabs. And we think a lot of them will kind of fall by the wayside because they have no utility. You're just minting and, and, and selling. And uh, that's the extent of most of the platforms right now, the NFT projects out there right now. So we think gamification, again, will, will play a big role in the next wave of NFTs. We think it's going to be really important for these NFTs not only to look good and feel cool and for you to kind of showcase them in your in your you know, trophy room, so to speak, but being able to use those in games or use those, you know, to go to an event or watch a movie or however else is going to be really, really important. How we're doing it is by adding a layer of gamification to NFT marketplaces. So if we're, if we're working with a league or a TV network or any content that already has that marketplace in place where they're buying and selling NFTs, we can add a gamification layer to it where you can then go and use those NFTs in prediction games or other gaming experiences. And in that process, win more NFTs and then perhaps gain access to exclusive content or the VIP area of the arena. Uh, so adding various levels of utility to the NFTs through gamification is how we're making a play. But in, in general, um, you know, utility uh, will be really important. And I think we're, you know, over the next, say, five to 10 years, we're all going to be using NFTs, you know, in ways that we wouldn't even imagine, like, you know, your ticket to an event or listening to an album or going and watching a movie. So really excited for, for NFTs and the, and the collectible space. That's great. Thank you. 
Uh, unfortunately, that is all the time we have. I want to thank all of our panelists as well as everyone listening. If any investors would like to get in touch with any of our panel companies, please reach out to myself or any members of the Lithium Partners team. Um, thank you very much and have a good day, everyone. Thank you. Thanks for your time, Ben.